So I was originally going to use this video to demonstrate a universal prison escape method that works on basically every single server software. Basically, you just stand in front of the outside of a prison and load up to, but not including the chunks that have the outer area bands. Then you just dig a hole in the wall without getting area band, step out, let the chunks load, and then throw explosives or potions in it to destroy the area bands. But some people told me they thought that would be boring. Apparently people are sick of light suppressor escapes. Okay, but look, I see what you're trying to say. Universal escapes are pretty boring. It just doesn't really feel like you outsmarted a prison builder when you do something they physically couldn't have prevented. But you guys seem to think that a niche prison exclusive escape would somehow be a lot more interesting just because it had more thought put into it. And so, just out of spite, I'm gonna make niche prison specific escapes that are more bland than universal ones just to prove you wrong. Instead of escaping a Minecraft prison from each of the three main server softwares with a universal escape, I'm just gonna take advantage of their lazy design. I'm gonna make you guys wish I used a light suppressor. So without further Further ado, let's start with the first prison on Paper MC, the Fortress of Solitude. Now, Fortress of Solitude isn't the worst prison ever, if we're including 2021 prisons, but it's still gonna be so easy to escape that I actually escaped it on accident a few times during this recording. Now let's look at the Cobble Regen cell. The first thing you'll notice is they use a repeater clock on a chunk border. If you don't know, repeater clocks on chunk borders are notorious for breaking themselves. And I'm 50% sure this repeater clock literally comes broken in the world download. This technically means we can just mine out of the cell, go to the guard room, and break the bed, but there are much easier and lazier ways to get out of this. Behold this awful bed glitch setup. I don't know who came up with this, but this is the worst bed glitch design I've ever seen. It's supposed to make it so if you respawn while the chunks are unloaded, you respawn in the lava, but it doesn't give you an opportunity to get back to a stand-up position, so you just keep dying in the lava forever. Oh, but Ken, what are you complaining about? Sure, it's inhumane, but it's not a security flaw. Yes, it is. The bed is literally right there. All I have to do is kill the shulker, and I can break the bed from inside the lava. Oh, but however will I die to go to world spawn? Okay, look, I'll be honest with you guys, I lied to you. When I said that if you click the respawn button while the chunks are unloaded, you'd respawn in the lava, that was a lie. No, you just respawn at world spawn. I'm not even joking. You just wait 10 seconds and press respawn and you escape. Yes, I'm testing this on a paper 1.17 server. Die, wait 10 seconds, escape the prison. That simple. Now let's move on to our vanilla prison, the Pan Octagon, or... Uh, Panoptic, wh whatever. Let's roleplay for a second and pretend we're visiting this prison. So after we go through all the redundant kill checks and stuff, we're gonna get to this bed right here. Now, this bed is obstructed, so if you right click it, your spawn point will be reset. So what you wanna do here is ignore it. And now we'll go into the cell and pretend to do our whole visit. And once it's done, a guard will, uh, manually drop TNT down into the cell. Because here at Thub Industries, we make sure to spend 10 months of our time to make the laziest prison possible. But now I have a question for you. Since we didn't click the obstructed bed, where do you think we're gonna respawn? Are we back in the visitor hallways? Well, no, because of course they obstruct it for end exploit prevention. So wouldn't we then just respawn on the roof and activate the kill switch? Nope, not that either, because the guards were nice enough to put a two block gap between the roof detector and the bed, so you still respawn inside the prison. I mean, sure, it's full of lava, but that's nothing a little fire resistance can't fix. So what you're gonna wanna do from this point is you're gonna use a stasis chamber to get outside of the prison, and then you have to get to the nearest end portal. It literally doesn't matter how long it takes you to do this, you just have to do it whenever you feel like getting around to it, but once you get there, we're gonna want a few select items. We're gonna take a pickaxe, a bunch of milk from the school cafeteria, a bunch of golden apples from the school cafeteria, and a bunch of explosives from the school. Now this is the part you have to get exactly right, so listen closely. After you respawn in the lava, you're gonna wanna dig straight down back to where the rest of the prison is. You're gonna go down the visitor hallway, and then just start mining all the completely useless netherite blocks. This prison would be just as secure if they were all ancient debris, but the guards just wanted to flex their wealth. And since they're offline, I think you're totally in your right to take them all. Honestly, don't even worry about the prisoner. They're way less valuable than all this netherite. Seriously, why do people put so many netherite blocks in their redstone? Is it because it's the most durable block you can move with a piston? Yeah, because if someone somehow gets into your redstone lines, I'm sure the netherite block will stop them from sabotaging it. Fear not, fellow guards, for there may be a ton of escapists running around the halls blowing stuff up, but I know exactly the tool that'll stop them. 54 netherite hose! Why? So anyway, at the end, you can just build another portal in the guard room, hop through, and call it a day. By the end, you should have between three and four stacks of netherite blocks, and if so, mission accomplished. Now you almost have enough netherite to build the Titan's vault exterior. I think this is a good time to remind you that, as we've just seen, 
one bad respawn contraption can make or break the quality of a prison. Let me just briefly explain this with an old Gaia's era prison called Dark Shadows Vault. It's got everything you'd need for a prison. A roof detector that you definitely can't course for past. A pearl glitch detector that you definitely can't pearl glitch past. Skulk sensors on the surrounding walls connecting to redstone and observers. Cause I guess they didn't know you could power observers with skulk sensors. But with all of this security, you can just die in crawl mode and respawn on the bed glitch boat. Then just break the subsidian, and mine the bed, then one more right click and you're dead. So I hope you finally got in your mind this definitely non-foreshadowing lesson that one bad respawn mechanic can ruin a prison. Welcome to Peace Up, the final prison on our list. Now, of course, Peace Up stands for probably should have used paper. Now, this prison was designed by Avatar.png, who many respectable people in the community would regard as one of the four or five people in the entire world who could be described as a super grand master in prison building. And just to give you a sense of how sophisticated and professional this prison is, as of the release of this video, the fastest I've ever escaped a prison on my escape list was Banker's Vault when I escaped in 3.75 seconds. My escape on Peace Up will take longer than that uh, by like three game ticks. So let's check it out. All right, here's the cell. Okay, we've got a standard two by two cell with an invulnerable end crystal. That's pretty good. What's the respawn contraption like? Oh, oh no. All right, so remember how this exact respawn mechanic allowed us to just straight up escape Fortress of Solitude by respawning? Well, for whatever unexplained reason, that doesn't work on Spigot. So maybe it's good you didn't use paper. But hear me out, let's just ignore the awful respawn mechanic for a second, because this prison has another even goofier flaw. See, normally in a regular Minecraft prison, they have a guard and some kind of extra contraption watching the entire visiting process to make sure the visitor isn't up to anything. But not in Peace Up, instead they have a guard enter the nether portal with you and sit in that little cramped space watching you. But the portal is area banned when you and the guard first enter it, so you both get kicked. And you better just hope that the guard logs on before the visitor does. What if the guard's connection throttles and he has to wait five seconds? Okay, come on, how much harm could a visitor really do in five seconds? So what you're gonna want for this escape is a pickaxe, two blocks of obsidian, an item frame, a water bucket, and a lava bucket, and an optional copper slab. Now what you're gonna wanna do as a visitor is wait for the visiting area band to turn off. And as soon as it does, you wanna log on before the guard does. Now if you fail this step, that's okay. Just finish the visit as normal and come back later and try again. If you do log on before the guard does, basically what you're gonna wanna do is break this copper slab and the two enchanting tables. Then you'll place them with solid blocks, that's what the obsidian's for, place the item frame, and put both the water bucket and the lava bucket in the item frame to turn them into an item elevator to push the items up to the prisoner. The prisoner just has to use the water and the lava to create an obsidian block where their respawn point is, and they'll literally respawn in the guard room. Okay, but what happens if the guard logs on in that five second period you're trying to escape? Well, I have a counter for that too. One thing you can do is use Jerry Lum's beacon lag machine. Basically, you just have to fill the base of a nearby chunk with beacons and put alternating layers of different colors of glass on top of the beacons. Multiply that 300 times all the way up to height limit, and it's bound to crash the game of every single person loading that chunk. Now you can evade this by just setting your render distance to two chunks beforehand, but if the guard's render distance is any more than four chunks, which it probably is, their game will pretty much freeze instantly, and by the time they realize what's going on, the prisoner will have permanently disabled the auto panic and escaped using the ender chest under the bed with all of my escape kits. But honestly, you probably don't even need to use a lag machine because if the guard actually logs on in that period of time and sees you tampering with the bed, he'll probably just think you're trying to throw items onto it and have the warden turn on the visiting lock lockdown ban, which fun fact, is out of range of the cell, so you can just do the escape whenever the guards log off. But believe it or not, this is actually the more difficult of the two escape plans. The one that abuses the respawn contraption is way simpler. So as soon the visiting process goes as normal, to end the visit, lava gets dispensed into the cell and the visitor and prisoner both die. Now the prisoner just has to wait for all the guards to log off and then they can click respawn. Since the chunks are unloaded, naturally they'll respawn where the shulker is. And just like in Fortress of Solitude, this is basically just a secondary cell. You physically cannot get out of here without killing the shulkers, so you will be respawning here indefinitely. I mean, surely that's not a harm to security. It's not like you're diagonally adjacent to a room the visitor has access to. So what you're gonna want for this escape is a pickaxe, a respawn anchor, and glowstone. That's pretty much it. And you don't even have to worry about logging on before the guard as much.
much because you could probably perform this escape before the guards can even react. Basically, the visitor will just log onto the server, break the slab, and throw the items onto the bed. That's it. Ideally, you have the prisoner log on at the same time this is taking place, and when you log on, you'll pick up the items instantly, and you can just light the anchor and blow up yourself and the bed at the same time. If you practice long enough, the entire escape combined will take you less than four seconds. And that is how Peace Up became my second fastest prison escape ever. So, thank you for watching. I hope you're just as disappointed in me as I am of you. Now I only have one more prison left on my escape list, and after that, I'll finally be free.